I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with Nick Robinson, who co-stars in the Netflix limited series Made as Sean, the abusive boyfriend of a woman trying to make a better life for herself and their young daughter. Uh, now, there's so much to chew on with this character, so much of his own history and trauma and experience. Uh, what were you most interested in exploring uh, about him when this opportunity came to you? The first thing that um, I was interested in exploring with Sean was just having the opportunity to play such a different character from roles that I've played in the past and, um, you know, having an opportunity to um, play a villain in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, my first interaction with this story was through Molly's um, incredible writing and kind of right from the beginning, her, um, her, her picture of Sean was, was very clear. It just made sense to me. I felt like I had um, known people sort of like this guy and um you know he was a very multi-dimensional character and i think it was important um right from the jump to make sure that he didn't fall into any kind of stereotypes or become just one thing or uh become you know a villain entirely or someone that's easy to to write off um i think you know with all the characters in the show um uh sean's no exception it was you know, the intention was to show a full picture of a human being and someone who, you know, is in crisis. And, um, you know, Sean is no exception to that. He's, you know, very much, um, uh, he's, he's trying in a lot of ways and he loves his daughter, but he is a damaged person and he keeps kind of dragging um, Alex back into this cycle of abuse and poverty. Um, and yeah, it was just an exciting opportunity just to play something different. Uh, and, and you mentioned, uh, you know, not, you know, him not being, you know, just a simple villain. Uh, and I think that's one of the interesting things about the character is, and the series is that, you know, the series never excuses Sean's behavior, but it also recognizes that human beings with human experience are the people who perpetrate this kind of behavior. Uh, what was it like finding that balance of, of empathy for him uh, without, you know, finding, you know, slipping into, uh, you know, making excuses for him. Totally. I, uh, it was hard at times. I mean, as, especially as the series progressed, like the later episodes, um, Molly and Colin and the rest of the writers really leaned into Sean, um, just kind of going off the rails and, and, and becoming, you know, um, embracing his like worst instincts and, and, and being really abusive. So, um, there were times that it was hard, but I mean, the thing that I just kept going back to was um, the fact that Sean really loves his daughter. I mean, that was sort of his um, guiding uh, light through all of this. And he's trying to um, raise her as best he knows how, but he hasn't really been modeled um, very good behavior from his parents. I and mean, the show touches on it briefly, but he comes from kind of a broken family life. And um, I think he's sort of one of those people that um, believes that family is family, no matter what, even if they're kind of toxic or uh, holding you back in a way, it's you kind of you stick it out. Um, and, and one of the things that he's wrestling with, I think, throughout the show is sort of that idea um, of, you know, Alex and Maddie are his family, and he's going to fix this, and he's going to be, you know, the provider and the man, but also slowly sort of recognizing that he can't and that he's not in a place to do that for them. Um, and he needs to kind of, you know, he needs to heal himself before he can be a part of their lives. And, um, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but it, it, that's sort of his arc over the course of the show, I think. Um, and, uh, it, you know, again, like you said, the show does not excuse any of his behavior, but um, it does try, I think, to just give a full picture of who this guy is and, and what's going on and maybe some of the, the, the underlying reasons for his behavior. Uh, and, you know, you're working in this series with uh, Margaret Qualley, who you've worked with a, a couple of times before uh, in recent years. Uh, you know, what was it like working with her again and just having that past work experience with her kind of help you develop that trust to go to these high and low places with where these two characters go? Sure. Yeah. I mean, 
Margaret and I have worked together three times now, which is pretty wild. I haven't worked with um, anyone in my <laughs> career three times. So uh, I don't know what it is about uh, the two of us, but it keep, we keep coming back together. And um, this one was really great. I felt like, you know, third time's the charm a little bit. Um, I don't think anybody's heard of the other. Well, it's not true, but this is definitely the, <laughs> the most popular thing we've done together. Um, and it did help. Yeah. It's, it's nice, um, to be able to come into a show and feel, um, like you already know people and trust people and have, um, feel kind of protected and supported in that way. Um, and you know, this show was not a light show. It was dealing with a lot of heavy subject matter. And I think it was helpful that Margaret and I have known each other for so long, so we could trust each other to, you know, do these, harder scenes and um, uh, sort of know that we had each other's backs at the end of the day. Um, and yes, yeah, she wasn't the only one that I, I'd also worked with uh, Q Tran, our DP. Um, she had been the she's DP of a, a teacher uh, and she also directed an episode. Um, also Anika Noni Rose I'd worked with before. Um, so there were a few people walking into it that I, I knew and it was actually, um, it, uh, it, it was, it was really great. I mean, to be able to, um, have a lot of the get to know you work kind of out of the way. Um, and, you know, I'm playing this character who, uh, you know, has, uh, his own history of, of trauma and addiction, uh, was the, what, what kind of preparations or, or research did you do beyond, uh, the book and, and getting to know Sean and the script about, you know, what these kinds of traumatic, uh, experiences are? Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I like, I mean, I, I, uh, I really relied mainly on the script, I thought that the material there was so rich that it it didn't need a whole lot of added um, sort of context. It, it felt like the character and all the information you needed was was there, and I didn't have to really you know reach or make anything up. Um, I read the book, um, and I also read uh, another novel, um, Evicted, about the housing crisis in in the in the States, um, watch the movies. Um, John would host a movie night oftentimes on the weekends at the hotel. So we do, do screenings. Um, and, uh, you know, as also we had, uh, a fair amount of, uh, prep time in, in pre-production, um, in Victoria. And so I, uh, just try to spend as much time with, um, uh, Margaret and, uh, Riley, who played our daughter as possible to sort of build in some kind of relationship there. Um, as the show progressed, it was funny. I would try to hang out with them and it was sort of this weird thing of life imitating art where Margaret would like <laughs> refuse and I'd be like, let me see Riley, let's hang out. Like, no. Um, and uh, it was so, I mean, just sort of, I think just by being up there and, and um, spending time with everybody and having, uh, we'd have, you know, during quarantine, especially the first two weeks, uh, we'd have nightly Zooms to go over the characters and the scripts um, with John and Molly. And those were helpful. Um, and yeah, I think just as time went on, we were up there for so long that everybody just kind of settled in to this world um, in, um, you know, in, in a way where, at least, especially in Margaret's case, she was just living it sort of 24 seven because she worked every day. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it, it did after a while feel a little bit like a, um, you know, a second skin, I guess. Um, and, uh, yeah, were there any scenes, especially as, as, uh, we're getting into the darker sides of, of Sean, uh, that were, especially difficult to prepare for? And, and how did you get into that mindset? And, and, and how did you perhaps more importantly come down from that after the fact? Was that difficult? Um, some of the scenes, yeah, I mean, were, were difficult. Uh, the, it was, yeah, there's, I mean, there were a few, especially again, as, as the series went on, um, I, you know, it, 
I did, it wasn't my favorite thing to be screaming at Margaret all the time. <laughs> um, but uh, I'd say um, there were some uh, in the, in the later episodes, I mean, um, you know, I think Sean's sort of darkest moments come around episode nine. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, you know, sometimes it can be hard to get yourself into that mind space, but it's also the job. And uh, I would, you know, listen to, uh, I was listening to a lot of Eminem at the time. So I'd get pumped up for that and <laughs> um, just try <clears throat> do push ups or like, I had a resistance band that I would pull and just anything to kind of get my blood pumping and try to access um, some of that anger that Sean had. Cause it's, it's not a natural reaction for me. It's not, um, it's definitely not my first uh, response to stress, you know? Uh, so um, just finding any way into to that and a way that, um, you know, uh, there were also some te <clears throat> technical aspects in the later episodes, I mean, just um, in in Q's episode, there were some um, sort of fancy camera movements and getting the um, shooting in the in that single wide trailer turned out to be difficult at times because everything's so small. These narrow hallways and trying to have cameras follow you down these hallways and choreograph all of this movement in this really confined space was. Uh, was also kind of tricky while also trying to make sure that, you know, you're doing justice to the scene. Um, and uh, yeah, I, it, but also it was, it really was like such a team of professionals and everybody, the crew worked their ass off and um, it, it, it never felt at once like insurmountable. It always felt like it was a conversation. We were coming into work and we we're going to figure it out. Um, and uh, yeah, it, you know, it, it, it was great. It was just a, um, it was really, uh, you know, I, I think I, people say this a lot, but it did really feel like a, a real collaboration and, and a team effort, especially by the end, because we had spent so much time together. It's an eight month shoot. And so everyone was pretty well locked in by the end. And you mentioned uh, shooting in that in that trailer, uh, you know, as a viewer, you watch it in that claustrophobic setting, you know, you really get the sense of these two people just being trapped in there. Uh, did that help uh, contribute to like sort of get you into the mindset of of this relationship and, and this character? Definitely, especially at the beginning. I mean, it was amazing um, when we first walked onto that trailer uh, to see the amount of detail that they had put into it. I mean, every um, <clears throat> every drawer had, you know, utensils in it and pots and pans, and it just felt very lived in. And it was, it was a, a great way, um, even into the character right at the beginning, um, just to see where these people had been living. And, um, you just got a real sense of like, uh, it just, you know, it was dark and, and kind of dank in there. And there was just, it was not a happy place to be spending time. Um, and there was just sort of a real sense of desperation uh, that I think um, came out of it. Um, but all of the, uh, all the world building was really, um, was, was really amazing. Um, the production design team did an incredible job. And uh, yeah, it, it, I think our first day of shooting was at the trailer. Um, and it did kind of set a tone, I guess. You really like understood it when you got to actually go to set and see all the things that you had sort of been picturing in your head. And um, uh, it exceeded my expectations. It was, it was really cool. Uh, what do you hope people uh, take away from, you know, Sean's uh, element of this story in particular and the cycles of abuse we see him perpetrate, especially like, perhaps men who, who might be watching this series and don't necessarily, uh, you know, think of abuse as, as this more emotional kind of controlling thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I hope that people get a better sense of um, domestic violence and sort of all the shades of it and um, the ways in which that, you know, Sean, 
as an abuser was, uh, yeah, they don't have to be bruises in order for it to be abuse. There's, you know, um, he is, he's controlling and manipulative and controls her finances and who she hangs out with and, you know, her self-esteem and, um, people can, you know, um, it, I think it's also, you know, easy to, um, at least in Sean's case, it, it can be hard for people who are outside the relationship to kind of reconcile the view they have of him with what Alex says is going on. Um, and I think that is a common story um, where abusers are sort of one way um, in public and then another way in private. Um, and it can happen to anybody. Um, uh, you know, and I, I hope that people, um, you know, have a greater understanding of of what um the working poor have to go through in this country just to get by um it's you know it the systems um as they exist are designed to be discouraging and confusing um and their first goal is not really to give people aid. It's, it's to discourage people to, to take the aid and all of the catch 22s of that system where, you know, if you work a certain amount of hours, um, you're eligible for welfare, but as soon as you go, you know, over that, that dollar amount, your benefits are cut and the bottom sort of falls out from underneath you. And there's, um, a lot of these, um, systems that are designed to help people are um, just overly complicated and um, uh, in, in often, in, in a lot of cases are actually failing the people that they were designed to help. Uh, on the complete opposite end of the sort of media spectrum uh, this year, you also continued to produce and recur in uh, Love, Victor, uh, uh, you know, the spinoff of Love, Simon, which was a, a major breakthrough for you. Uh, I, so I just got, was kind of curious of, you know, what you think of the continued impact that that sort of universe is, is having with people. It's incredible. Um... I, you know, was so thrilled when Isaac and Elizabeth first approached me with the idea um, to make the series uh, and to be able to give um, sort of the Love, Simon treatment to a completely different um, person with a completely different background and to sort of broaden the inclusivity of that story, I think is incredible. And um, it's been it's been really amazing to, um, you know, just see the impact of the continued impact of the show and the way that it's now um, just, you know, evolved. And um, I think they're, they're telling riskier stories too. They're sort of pushing the envelope uh, more, which I think is great. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's been really cool. And, you know, I get to, I actually filmed the the cameo in the last season while I was in Victoria filming made, which is sort of why Simon all of a sudden looks a little raggedy with his beard and long hair. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was, um, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really glad I got to be a part of it. Well, I want to congratulate you on your work in MADE and, and all of the work uh, that you've done uh, in recent years throughout your career. Um, and we'll, uh, I'm no doubt, continue to do. Uh, thank you so much for talking to me about it. Of course. Yeah. Thanks, Daniel. I really appreciate the time.